Thank you. Uh, thank you all very much. Thank you so much for coming here this year. And uh, to Stephen Chambers, thank you for those kind words. And I've read over Shelley's job description, but the hours were a little long, so I'm not so sure about that. Um, once again, the staff of the Saeed Business School and the entire Oxford community have come together to be wonderful hosts uh, this year. And I'd like to say a special thanks to Stephen Chambers, to Liz Nelson, to Alex Nichols, and the entire school community, uh, the entire school center team for their hard work. As you just heard, this is the fifth year of the School World Forum on Social Entrepreneurship. Oxford has been a wonderful host, um, but this is a tough place to recognize the fifth year of anything. Uh, after all, this university has been around for almost a thousand years. And it's kind of like bragging to Warren Buffett that you've just won $5 in the lottery. Um, but as you may know, uh, we have an established tradition here of giving creative gifts to the leadership of the school in, in a way to say thank you. Um, and I wanted to do something really special this year. As it turns out, the traditional gift for the fifth year is wood. So I went on to eBay to see what I could find. <laughs> and one idea was a listing for firewood because nothing says you've come a long way like a stack of burning logs. Another idea was a nice coat rack, but I'm guessing that those who give coat racks for the fifth anniversary don't make it to the 10th. I even became so desperate that I looked at a, a very unique item, a, a hand-carved wooden Celtic love spoon. But then I remembered that this Saturday, March 29th, uh, the day after this forum comes to a close, Oxford squares off against Cambridge in the 154th rowing of the annual boat race. And as fortune would have it, I came across an original wood engraved linen print of the Oxford and Cambridge boat race that was printed in the Graphic Magazine on March 29th, 1890. And the print is titled, Here They Come. I'm gonna see if I can show it to you. Can you see that? Yeah, um, and there are two reasons why I like it. Uh, the first is that it's a good reminder that all of us are in a race, a race against poverty, a race against climate change, and a race against disease. The second reason, if you look at the, um, the giant clouds of smoke that are rising <laughs> from a few of the engines on the water, is that the causes of global warming have been with us for a very long time and we need to be the generation that puts an end to it. And best of all, the price was 12 pounds, which, <laughs> which at current exchange rates translates to only 400 American dollars. <laughs> uh, finally, in 1890, not only did Oxford beat Cambridge, but it also kicked off a nine-year Oxford winning streak, one of the longest in history. So may this print help history repeat itself. So Stefan, this is yours. Thank you. <laughs> uh, it's my honor to join Stefan Chambers in welcome you all to the fifth annual School World Forum on Social Entrepreneurship. The 700 or so men and women that you see sitting around with you today come from more than 40 different countries on six continents. And even though Here They Come works well on this print, it may not be the best title for this forum. I think it's safe to say once and for all, here we are, here we are. Social entrepreneurs have arrived. And it's hard to imagine that it was just two years ago when I describe social entrepreneurs as one of the world's best kept secrets. Well, the secret is out. And here are a few examples. Several weeks ago, a businessman gave a keynote address at the World Economic Forum in which he called for a huge expansion in what he called creative capitalism, a concept that draws liberally from social entrepreneurship. Another example, last April, a television host devoted a whole show to profiling three groundbreaking social entrepreneurs and drawing attention to their projects. And finally, a few months ago, an American politician gave a speech 
in which he proposed creating a national social entrepreneurship agency. And if you're wondering how much influence can these three people have, well, what if I told you that the businessman was Bill Gates, the TV host was Oprah Winfrey, and the politician was Barack Obama? And when you have the world's biggest economic, political, and social figures coming together to talk about an idea at the same time, you know that that idea has arrived. And I'm delighted that so many of the most innovative minds in this field have come together with us again this week to advance the conversation. Three years ago, Muhammad Yunus gave a keynote speech here. And the next year, Yunus went on to win the Nobel Peace Prize. Two years ago, Al Gore spoke here. And the next year, Al went on to win the Nobel Peace Prize. Coincidence? <laughs> And so as we all gather here for the fifth time, there's no question, social entrepreneurs today have more headlines, more awards, more advocates, and more allies than ever. And all that is vitally important because the one thing we don't have more of that we desperately need is time. On climate change, on clean drinking water, on poverty, on education, on HIV AIDS, on global pandemics, we're racing against the clock, and I'm afraid the clock is winning. And if we don't act quickly enough to act together as a planet, a decade from now, we may be facing unbelievable humanitarian disasters, the likes of which we've never seen. But we're all here because we know it's not too late to reverse these trends. But it's going to take people who are passionate, who are creative, and above all, people who are completely incapable of understanding the words, it's impossible, it can't be done, or why bother even trying? In other words, people just like all of you. As I've often said, social entrepreneurs have two kinds of power. The first is the power to bring specific change through the work that you do. And the other is the power to inspire to bring other people and organizations to work together to scale solutions and to find new ways to solve problems. As Nicholas Kristof recently wrote in the New York Times after attending the World Economic Forum, today the most remarkable young people are the social entrepreneurs, those who see a problem in society and roll up their sleeves to address it in a new way. There's no limit to the number of social entrepreneurs who can make this planet a better place. Well, we need your power today more than ever, for all these problems are waiting to be solved. And we arrive in Oxford this week to say, here we are, here we are. Thank you and welcome. <laughs>